Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again. Professor McAllister here, and if you'll remember in my last video, I taught you about the different reference materials that you might see on the tees. So today I'm presenting, let's take a closer look. Let me show you some examples of these reference materials. If you'll remember, the first reference material I taught you was about the dictionary. And the dictionary is where we would go to find the meanings of the words. I have an example of a variety of dictionaries here you can see. But let's look at what a question might look like. Question, where would you find the meaning of the word pantry? A, thesaurus, nope. B, encyclopedia, nope. C, dictionary, yay, that's the right answer. D was bibliography, and we know that that's not the correct answer. So if you have a question on the T's asking you, where would you find the meaning of the word? The answer will always, always be dictionary. And in the event they throw in another word like academic dictionary, then it would be that one, academic dictionary. Let's look at another. The next resource we talked about was a thesaurus. And if you'll remember, the thesaurus is a book of synonyms, words that have similar meanings. It is useful for varying word choice in essays. Let me show you what I mean. There are over 100 different ways to use the word said. So let's look at the first sentence. The student failed the test even though she said she had studied. Well, we know we need a more scholarly word than said. So we refer to our thesaurus and we find a better word choice. The student failed the test even though she insisted she had studied. Okay, for another example, my doctor said that all the tests came back negative. A better way of saying that is my doctor reported that all tests came back negative. So please remember a thesaurus is useful for varying word choice finding better words to use. The next type of reference material I taught you is the appendix. And the appendix is a section in the back of a book which includes additional supplemental information related specifically to that text. Not all books will have appendices. Let me show you an example. If you were reading a book on global warming, Appendix 1 might have a map of countries that show which ones produce the most emissions. Appendix 2 could be a bar graph of the amount of emissions from each country. And Appendix 3 could be a list of resources for additional information. It's my guess that appendix is never the correct answer on the reading section of the T's. I also talked about the index. The index is usually the very last section in a book. It's similar to the table of contents, which by the way is in the front of the book, but it includes much more detailed information and it includes specific page numbers. So here's an example of an index in the back of a book. Kind of hard to read. So I have zoomed in and captured another image. 
So let's say you're in this book about succeeding in college, but the most important thing to you is finding financial aid. So you know by looking in the index under C for college, you can see that financial assistance is on pages 146, 147. So you'd start looking there. And if you didn't find what you were looking for, then you would go to page 272. And again, if necessary, you can go to page 274. The index is useful for finding specific information quickly. Now I'm going to talk about the almanac. I have a picture of an almanac in, on the screen. It's the Farmer's Almanac, it, which has been around since 1792. It's a book type, calendar type text that includes information regarding the weather, the water tide levels, and the phases of the moon, amongst other things. And this old farmer's almanac is probably the most popular one of the different almanacs that are out there. Farmers used to depend on it to determine when to plant or harvest their crops or to find out when to expect the next full moon or even a solar eclipse. In fact, some farmers still use this. So let's have a look at what the question might look like. Which resource would someone use to find out when the next crescent moon will be? A, dictionary, nope. B, thesaurus, wrong answer. C, almanac. If someone needs to find information about the weather or the phases of the moon, or even a solar eclipse, they would use an almanac. Lastly, I want to teach you about one more reference material. I did not include this on my previous video, I apologize, but it's very important that you know this information. And this is the periodical index. When you go to the campus library and do a search for a journal article, say you're writing a paper on autism, and you get a listing of all the different journal articles related to autism, that's the periodical index. Here's an example of a periodical index. And notice it'll include the author's name, the name of the journal, the publication information, and the page numbers. So what might a question like this look like? Let's see. Where would someone need to look to find a particular journal article, such as one that might be published in the Employee Relations Law Journal? A, encyclopedia. Nope, that's just for expository texts. B, that's the correct answer, a periodical index. And then the other choices, C, appendix, and D, almanac. The correct answer, again, is periodical index. Thank you for joining me for a closer look at reference materials. I hope you found this information helpful. Please feel free to leave comments or questions on the video. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of my future videos. My next video will be all about identifying the main idea, the summary, topic sentence, and supporting details. Please join me then.